Welcome back to another episode of the OLP Lounge. I'm with Charles Bentley, and I'm joined by Mr. Taylor Boggs once again. And we're going to get right into the topic of guards, building the perfect offensive line athlete. And we're going to dive into, as I said, guards. Who are the guards in today's game that we feel embody the most ideal traits of the perfect offensive line athlete? So Taylor's going to lead it off. The first category is going to be strength. Who are you going with, big dog? Uh, it's probably an obvious one, but I'm going to go with Kelechi from Oakland. That's an easy pick. I know, but I, it's like a highlight reel of strength. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, can I throw you off a bit? I'm I told him before we got going that my list is a bit um, unorthodox, to say the least. And I think I'm going to just kick it off with Langan Tomlinson. Langan, hold on, uh, hold no, on. I, like I know you That's like Langan. Hold on, hold on. Let me tell you why. I'm going with Lincoln because as a former first round pick, I think he started his career off a little rough. But there were some things that you would see on film that a an average Joe just could not do. And then you also see some things on film every now and again that you'd expect from an elite level guard in terms of movement relative to strength and even football IQ. He's not a dumb football player. He's a very smart football player. Maybe that's because he went to Duke and all that type of stuff. I he's guess with, you got to be. He was with the med school. Yeah, with the med school. Yeah. He's supposed to be a doctor right now, not a football player. But anywho, I watch him play and he got. he's always been able to get himself out of very awkward situations. And you see him now having a resurgence in San Francisco. I think he just got paid a little bit more money. And... I just keep seeing a guy that he may not ever become elite, but I, I can surely stand uh, the idea that the dude is strong. Yeah, he's, he's good for any team. I'm Hell yeah. Like, any he, team, any offense. Yeah, because uh, I'm not a fan. Lakin, and Lakin's my friend. So, okay. So. Well, well, well uh, it's not fair then. If he's your friend, I should have yeah. went with somebody else. No, I mean, I'm glad you think highly of him. I think he's a good guy, too. But am I wrong? No, dude, that guy, if we're talking power, mobility, strength, yeah. all that stuff, mm -hmm. he's in another world, man. Fair enough, then. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, let's go right to power. And I'm going to tell you now. That reminds going to be so basic now. It's it? basic. I told you, man, I came, I'm coming out the gate strong. I'm going to let you know out the gate right now. I got two guys for power. Okay. Well, I'm going to have an old category. and a new. Okay. So who you got? I got Zach Martin. For power? Yeah. Dude, okay, first Explain. off. Explain. Because. Explain. First off, in space, uh -huh. it's beautiful. What he does for his big body totally in space, agree. like him I getting totally out there, agree. screens, yeah. I could watch that all day. But then just the fact that he plays in the same stance all game, and it doesn't matter if his three tech lines up as a wide nine. I give you that. He gets out of his stance so smoothly. It's it's effortlessly, it takes a lot of power to be able to do that. And I really enjoy his game. Like, so okay, I, fair enough. I mean, you can't argue with it. It's me. right, though. It's basic, but it's right. <laughs> but is it a better pick than Larry Warford? I got Larry on here. No, 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 no. Is Larry in power? Is he a better pick than Larry Warford for power? And also, I told you I'm coming strong, man. Mike Iapati. Now, Mike Iapati is not the same Mike Iapati of maybe four years ago. Yeah. But I tell you this, that Mike four or five years ago, not the Mike we're talking about today. He's getting older. You know, the game is caught up to him. His best football is definitely behind him. But even with that said, he's still a current player. And you still see at moments and in instances oh, yeah. that Mike of four or five years ago, yeah. and it is scary. But my number one, my 1A is Larry Warford. My 1B is Mike Iapati. But I just don't see Zach Martin in that category. No. Nah, well, you betrayed Larry, man. That's your boy, too. Let, let him down. With Larry man. and Mike, those are like some of my closest friends. Let him down, man. I tell you, like, uh, Mike is uh, Mike's deuce block in San Francisco. Yeah. I feel it's like scary. he gave people nightmares. Yes. I've seen him just run over people on accident. <laughs> Like, he's like, oh, oh, my bad, bro. <laughs> right. No, I love both of them. Like, right? I love the pick. Like, uh, I, when I just think of, like, 
you got to have a lot of power to move as smooth as Zach I agree. does. I agree. And, I agree. And, and he does move, and he's a big guy. I agree. Yeah, you know right. what I mean. He's a left you're tackle right. that came inside. Yeah, and he kind of kept that whole space concept and yes. he kept the smoothness. Mm-hmm. But I was surprised because you know tackles they don't do anything on screens. Fair enough. And and they just try to get they pretend to get beaten on. They don't do nothing. <laughs> but he said pretend they get yeah, beaten. Yeah. So, okay. But he never runs screens like that and. In college, and when he came in the NFL, you know, release flat, getting up to the second level, mm-hmm. it just it, it was just impressive to see a big guy like that. Move. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I just have a hard time putting him in that Larry Warren. I know, I know. Mike, you're a potty category because when I see Larry at that point of contact, and he's a nice guy, but it's violent. And when he hits people, they move. When people hit him, they generally stop. And Mike Yapati a few years ago, it is something serious. But I understand yeah. your line of reasoning. But I went with Zach Martin with skill. So okay. when I get down to skill, Martin is top of mind. Outside of Yonder. But we went, we, we, yeah, we we went, went with Yonder on the right? uh, first part okay, I'm glad of the you series. Up I, I had to switch it up. I thought you were getting mad at me because I switched it up. No, no, no. Okay. I, went, I, went, you know, I went Zach Martin. When I watched Zach Martin, you know, I don't know how much longer he's going to play. And to me, it doesn't really matter because he surely uh, established himself as the premier guard of this era. Oh, yeah. With that said, he would arguably be, arguably be in my top five, top ten greatest guards of all time. All time. All time. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. you know, some people may balk at that, but when you really do your homework on him, what he's done from day one, even now later in his career, overcoming injuries and circumstances that are much out of his control, he's still playing at a beyond elite level. So I can't wait to one day he does have a busting cat and, and deserve really something. Yeah, we'll have one. Okay, so my Let skill, pick. my skill is Larry Warford. All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, and, okay. And I mean, this is like unfair okay. because, you know, I've seen this kind of as a teammate, as a workout partner, as a coach. Mm-hmm. I've seen like the details that goes into his skill, okay. and he's so meticulous. And then he could go out there and still yawn someone. Like, you know, he has like the mindset that you would see as like a finesse guy because the way he's yes. so meticulous with his skill. I, I totally agree. But it just transfers into just him dominating people. No, no, no. Let's, let me play devil's advocate. I, I, don't, I don't dance with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me take the inverse of what yeah, you're saying. Okay. Let me go the opposite way. I'm a huge Larry Warford fan, obviously. But skill-wise, if you look at the complete body of work relative to Zach Martin, can we say that Larry's been as consistent as Zach Martin? Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. I, I, told, like I call, told you I'm like you coming out Larry the gate. I don't like you calling I'm boy. coming out like the that. gate. Yeah, okay. So then I got inside information to this because I know what he's been asked to do and he's I, I made get it work. I know that too. Because he I'll, went from setting deep. Yes. And he kind of had that, um, uh, it, what's it, The inside information is being he had some very suspicious coaching, but keep going. And then he went to jump setting. Mm-hmm. He had to jump. Yep. He, had, he always had to jump set. Okay. Third and long. And he was able to apply, like, hey, it's the same thing. He was like, I drive catch to take a, or to, to uh, create space. Yeah. Now I'm drive catching to take away space. He's figured some things out with his okay. hand. Um, it doesn't matter who he goes against. He's, he matches up well versus the short guys. Better than Zach Martin. I agree with you there. Yeah. But he can stop the tall guys. As a shorter guard, he stops the tall guards okay. or tall D tackles. He does it with that inside hand. Um, he... No. So your stance with Larry is this, is that a part of true skill is being able to overcome circumstances by using base principles and applying those base principles to anything you're asked to do. He's done it better than anyone. I agree with you, but is that what you're saying? Yeah. I didn't know I was saying that, but now I know I'm saying that. <laughs> okay. Let's get a little bit off topic here. Just a little bit off topic. Because this conversation where we are now I think this is relative to a lot of young high school athletes and even a lot of college athletes as well that deal with very similar realities where it's, well, my coach told me to do this and I'm having to do it this way and I see what this person is doing and what this person is saying and instinctually this makes more sense, but my coach says do it this way. Is Lay Warford a shining example of being able to overcome the worst of coaching? Oh, hands down. Now, 
How do you do it though? Is it what you just said by living in that world of base principles? Yeah, because he it's he just has a principle he lives by. Mm-hmm. He understands movement better than any athlete I've been I around. Totally agree. And uh, if, if you tell him a method, mm-hmm. well, that's fine. He'll take that method. And, but he starts with his principle to apply yeah. to any method. Yeah. Whether he's got to be in a two point. Remember in Detroit, the one year he had to be in a three point, even yes. in two minute. Yes. And he had to jump set, but he mm. went with his his principles to that method. He went down to New Orleans. Did the same thing. Yeah. Now yeah. he's running. He's, he was the guy. He was a three hundred thirty pound guard doing backside cutoff. He was a guy that wasn't athletic enough. Yeah. And he's yeah. yeah he run, yeah. What did he run? A five six forty. He probably ran his height. <laughs> So, but he he sticks to his principles. So I, right. I I get that because high school kids are always like, man, you know, because kids are smart now. They're yes. aware. They're and li- very they're aware. They're very aware. So yes. they know they can smell some BS. But you know what? Yes, that's the BS might be the method. But as long as you got the right principles, yes. let's roll. So with that said, principles. If you young athletes out there don't know what we're referring to relative to what are the principles you're talking about. Go over, to, go over to the OLP website, live on our Instagram, live on a YouTube page. You will slowly but surely start to understand the principles of movement. Once you understand those principles of movement, you can then take those principles and apply them to any method, any scheme. So little tidbit right there. Now, speaking of that, that's going to take a little bit of a acumen for young athletes. And acumen then leads us into football IQ. Now, I'm going to kick this one off again because I got to pay respect to my Cleveland boys. You know, the Cleveland guys always, always represent. And Roger Saffold, he's my pick for football IQ. First time Pro Bowl of this past year. (laughs) Maybe... Might be a Super Bowl runner-up. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe be Super Bowl champion. We don't know. But I know this. You watch him over his career. Came in as a second-round pick. Played left tackle out the gate. He was solid. He's solid. He was solid as a left tackle. Great feet. Move. Understood principles. Uh, whether he under- knew it or not, he definitely understood movement. Moved him in the guard, and his game never changed. But what you what I see out of him is is a guy that's overcome a lot of you know. I guess you can say uh, less than ideal circumstances, but his performance is never wavered. When I watch him passing off games, seeing things before it happens, not having a guy like Whitworth next to him definitely takes the football IQ that much higher because Whitworth has so much experience. Yeah. I just see a guy that is beyond just consistent of a football player. He's somebody that embodies intelligence to me. Yeah, no. And he's from Cleveland. Well, that's the most important. So now, I've, now I've been a huge fan of Robert Saffold over huh? the years. Mm-hmm. Now I got to take him down a notch Why? because he's from Cleveland, and that bothers me. That's not fair. So, but no, he's been that's one racist. Of, he's been one, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's racist. No, he, he has been one of my favorite guards to watch for a long time. Uh-huh. I, I've even. I feel like he just goes, I know he got contracts and stuff, but yeah. no one talks about him. Nobody talks about and him. And he shuts down people. Everybody. He, yes. He, no, big fan. I'm like, he's got short legs and he's overcome that. It just looks short in his stance, but he's just weird. I love him. Yeah. I like Whitworth too, I'm, but I'm a big fan of a uh, definitely big fan of Saturday. definitely. Who you got? Okay, football IQ. This this is inside information, but I can tell you this. I'm gonna go with Josh Sitton. I give you that because okay, we watched him in games. Yeah, go to left tackle. I give you that. We watched him play both guards in games, and we watched him go to center. And he's played all of them at a high level. I give you that. And then, I yeah. mean, I've also been in a meeting with him. Okay. I had to sit there and just take notes of how much he knew. He's, oh, really? He was like, uh, it was like, I've never seen a guard you know that much. Like, he was like a 15-year center, it seemed like. Really? So, uh, yeah. That's inside information. But, I mean, at the end it of the day. It is what it is. You, that, if you could play that many positions. You know something. You know it. Yeah, you figure some things yeah. out. Now, as you move into attitude, and I don't appreciate your racist comments about this. Is not, no, no, no. I don't appreciate no, that. No, no, no. That's the problem in the society nowadays. <laughs> He's a part of that toxic masculinity <laughs> culture. That's the I'm the soft one. Look <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> Everyone calls That's me soft. <laughs> attitude. I'm going to let you go first with attitude. I got two. I got two. T- I got two, too. Okay, well, these are... Um, no, I'll pick a third one, but go ahead. No, no, go ahead. no, no. no. It's <laughs> two. Go ahead. go ahead. So, I got Sean Laval. Okay. And I think that's a guy that's been overlooked, but uh, his whole career, I mean, that. you know why, it's because he's in Cleveland, and how could you not look past Cleveland? But he, uh, going. I just love the way he finishes. I agree. Uh, he I agree. takes pride in that. He takes pride in finishing. The other one is, he's, an, he's another friend of mine, but mm-hmm. it's Ted Larson. 
is, are we picking up a trend here? Are we being a little biased here? I know. I didn't want to do are that. a little biased here? I didn't want to do mm, that, but... Interesting. But I'll tell you why, too. Because Ted, he's always kind of been a backup. We know he's a yes. starter, but he's always yeah. been kind of a backup. Yeah. But... He has that. He always finishes like Sean. I agree. He doesn't care who he's going against. He, come, he could come he in off the bench. He does not care. He does yeah. not care. And he's gonna come in there and fight. Mm -hmm. Same with Sean. Mm -hmm. And they always finish. And they're just fun to watch. They're football players. <laughs> and they have that. Now you got me feeling bad over here because I agree with you. I agree. Well, I'm gonna go with the more, um, you know, I guess you can say popular picks. Oh, okay. Well, it was. It so was who am I going with? It was World War Three when I would say <laughs> Kalechi. <laughs> nope. When I'm saying when I said Kalechi for sure. Oh, yeah, of course. Popular, well, I think for me, and I'll tell you why, I got two guys. My first one is Quentin Nelson. B big fan. Okay. Big fan. You're not going to get much argument there. His attitude. No, heck no. Okay. He and growls I, when he, when he I, posed. Right. I'll, <laughs> I'll come back and explain that. Can't even breathe. Like <laughs> my second one, and I think this is a more of an uh, honorary selection, because of what this person has done in the past, and it's Kyle Long. Okay. All right? So now, <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, let me explain Quentin Nelson. For a rookie to come in with so much hype, so much, everybody and their mama, oh my God, he's football Jesus on the offensive line. He comes in and he walks on water. And then, it wasn't just everybody talking about him. He made some comments Talking about, you know, a few of the D linemen that, you know, is guys like Fletcher Cox or guys like so and so and so and so that, you know, the NFL is having a hard time blocking. I'm that guy. I said, wow, man. Okay, big dog, put the city on your shoulders. He did it. Then he gets into the league, and we've had some personal conversations, and we're like, look, I like it, I respect it, I appreciate it, but man, you you had to put on your big boy draws and really man up as a rookie. And you know what? He did. Dude. Now, the only caveat to that is this. I think he still has a lot of growing room, a tremendous amount of room to growth. I think that a little bit of the hype from the social media climate is a bit, um, let's just say, exaggerated. Yeah. I think it's easy to take clips and, oh, look at this clip. He's an animal, like, yeah, but there's 60 some other plays. Yeah. And everybody gets beat. I don't care who you are. And you can take those same, um, you know, micro shots of literally probably every player in the NFL on any given Sunday, and they're probably blowing somebody up. Yeah. But it doesn't happen. What happens is when there's a narrative created about a guy like a Ted Larson, right? Or yeah. a guy like a Sean Laval. Yeah. People tend to take those clips of something not going well and using that as a negative against They're them. They're finding their four bad plays in the game. Bingo. But no one wants to look at his four bad plays. So that's a wave that he's going to have to ride. And I respect it. It is what it is. The climate that we live in. But at the same time, I don't feel that uh, many players like the players you mentioned get the respect that they deserve because of People like Quentin Nelson, when they come in and you got this tidal wave of, of momentum that he, you know, I, he's earned and rightfully so, but at the same time, you got just jock sniffers. I'm sorry. Jock oh, sniffers. Yeah. yeah. Jock sniffers yeah. that just, oh my God, look at this play. And then you also, you got certain jock sniffers that are former players that can't wait. Oh, look at them right here. Like, well, put your film on. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but we ain't got to say no names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it's your film on. It's not the notes. It's not on the notes this time. So we're not going to say any names. But then I get to Kyle Long, and I have so much respect for him because with Kyle, you can't kill him. Oh, my gosh. No, you can't. You can't kill him. And that's why I love him. Like, it broke hand, broke foot, broke neck, broke back. Who I got? Yeah. He played a new position, lining up right with Julius Peppers, his first time ever. Yeah. With a club. With a club. With a club. And, and you know, he gave him a sack, and guess what? He, he fought the whole game. The whole he game. Didn't so that's care. why, and with Kyle, man, each and every week, it doesn't matter if he's on the injury report or not, that dude's going to line up. If he's on the field, you're in for a fight. 
Yeah, I've seen him just swallow people alive, like pulling and stuff every week. You're like, oh, I, wouldn't, I didn't even know he was off IR. Look at him, just killed a man. <laughs> no, no, you said off of IR. Yeah, he just right, killed right. a man. He had surgery two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, like, did right. he have surgery? Right. right. Okay, mental resiliency. I got one that's going to knock your panties off, man. Who you got? Okay. I'm going with TJ Lang. <sighs> Explain. Because... Now, I, I'm not a jump setter. I hate jump setting. Oh, and TJ Lang, I, I believe he uses great movement principles, a great stance. He's drive catching to yeah. close space. He jump sets. Yeah. And he does it. Yeah. If he gets beat, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's going to come back and jump set. Yeah. If it's wide, it doesn't matter who he's going against. Mm-hmm. That's his game. He sticks to it. If he gets beat one time, it's probably the last time he gets beat in that game, and he's not changing anything. I so agree. I think he's, he, you know. I mean, everyone's been in a bad situation, and they're like, "Oh, I can't do this this game." Yes. Well, he's done it his whole career, and that's it. He's and they changed it. it. Yeah. So I, I, I and you know I what? Respect I respect that. I played in the division, so yes. I watch him. I'm like, dude, he doesn't change his set. I respect that for sure. I went a, a different route, and I like this guy because um, he he's overcome a lot to get to where he's at, and that's Shaq Mason. Oh, I like Shaq, man. Big fan of Shaq. Some will argue, and hell, I might even be one of those people uh, that would argue that he's been um, a benefactor of the Tom Brady effect. Okay. You look at Nate Soder, definitely a benefactor of the Tom Brady effect. You take him out of uh, the Tom Brady system, different guy. But a different topic, we'll discuss that right now. But with Shaq Mason, this is still someone that came into the league and never really took a pass at in college. Maybe like 20 in a year? Maybe 20, if you're lucky. Yeah. And most of them are going to be rollouts, and you aren't really going to be matched up in a true one-on-one type of situation, coming from Georgia Tech. And he was more in that, you know, that wing T, forward, bulldozing type of uh, offense, and there was nothing truly finesse about it. He was six foot one on probably a good day, and people said he was too short, he wasn't this enough, he wasn't that enough, but yet he found himself in the right spot, in the right system, with the right people, and he took ownership of it. Oh, yeah. It wasn't just, I'm here, let me just be here. It was, I'm here, let me thrive, and the skills that he didn't have, he developed them over time. I go back to uh, last year when he gave up that big sack late in the Super Bowl yeah. against Graham. And it really, I don't, I'm not gonna say it cost him the game, but it was at a very inopportune time. You could have went in thinking I just blew the Super Bowl. Yes. You could have left there, I mean. Thank you. The like Bowl. that is one of those moments that as a offensive line athlete, it's like for a center, you don't want to be the guy that throws the ball and a shotgun snap over yeah. somebody's head in that situation. You, just made, you made my stomach turn. <laughs> right? Like, it's like, no, not now. Uh, maybe a little low, yeah. <laughs> but not too far right, not too far, yeah. just, just right. But with him, to give up a, a big sack in that situation, when you watch him the next play, he didn't change anything. No. Then you come back the following season, and he's had a great year. Oh, and yeah. this is a guy, as I said, that he's making about 10 million bucks a year average, then getting like a $50 million contract. But this is a kid that wasn't ever enough. He wasn't a big time recruit out of high school. He wasn't someone that grew up in a situation where, you know, football was spoon fed to him. He grew up in a single parent household. The same old story we typically always yeah, kind of yeah. hear. But for him to be where he's at, uh, in that situation and then take advantage of it. We've seen guys end up, or having a similar story, end up in very opportune situations and still blow it. Yeah. And still blow it. Yeah. There was one guy that was, we won't say his name, but that was there. Yeah. That was the exact same deal and probably more talented. Blew it. Blew it, yeah. So he took advantage of it. So I respect the hell out of him in this game. If you don't, if you're not a fan of Shaq Mason, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. You're out of your freaking mind. It, it, just that story you all said. But it, every guard in here loves watching Shaq Mason. Yeah. Right? And that, and he, you know what else though? He's like Lang, man. He just keep, he he, he jump set Graham. He's gonna do what he's gonna he do. Hits, and he came back. And he came back and did it again all year this year. <laughs> respect yeah. the hell out of it, man. Yeah. So we get to our linchpin trait with offensive line athlete. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got it? No, no, no. Did you skip work capacity? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped it. Dude, this oh, is, but can this we go? Can we just? Get, I'm getting excited, man. Can we get? To no, our, no, no, no. Why not? I got to go get, work capacity. I want you to get to my linchpin trade. Dude, dude that's the linchpin man, trade. I'm, so, I'm excited about this linchpin trade. It's uncoachable, man. Unco see, that's another racist comment. That's, that's, that's very, <laughs> yeah. you, you just let them slide today. Anyway, work capacity, who you got? I got Kyle Long. <sighs> I see at 340 pounds, the guy, with a broken everything, and he's still not tired on the field. He chases every play down. I seen him chase an interception, tear his... I saw him tear his okay. hamstring, and he got up and finished the okay. game, chasing an interception. Okay. I've never seen him tired. Okay. Okay. It, neck I, brace, whatever. I mean, but it, he's, he's a genetic freak. He should never be tired. I don't care. He's, he should never be tired. I don't care. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yes. Yeah, he should never see, be tired. there he is. Dance with the devil. If I'm braces, you're a devil worshiper. <laughs> Kyle, I don't care. Kyle, is, he never gets tired. Huh? He chases everything down. I've seen him weigh as much as... Uh, Probably I don't know about the status, Kyle, but no, he's weighed 350 before. Oh. My bad on his drop. And he still okay. just finished and finished. Yeah. So, I mean, for, for me, just Kyle. All right. I'm going with a little bit off the grid, but he just made his first Pro Bowl. I think he was alternate, got in the Pro Bowl this year. Joe Batonio. I like Joe. Joe Batonio. I, I, I just like him. Nevada. His, yeah, you know, he's, he's a workhorse. I yeah. think he's a guy that just, uh, he shows up each and every week and... I respect guys like him that when you come out of school like Nevada, you know, I don't care where you're drafted, if you're undrafted, if you're first round pick, not much is expected of you. It just is what it is. No. There's not a lot of tradition there. Uh, the expectations and standards are relatively low. And then you go to a city like Cleveland, which is like the Malibu of the Midwest, and it's probably a bit of a culture shock for him. Would you, uh, no, no, it's too far? Okay. All right. So you go to a city like Cleveland to an organization. Shocked. <laughs> you go walks to a, outside. How is water on fire? <laughs> Why is the water on fire? Man, you're going to start bringing up old stuff. So anyway, uh, there was a clip. You talk about Kyle. There was a clip from, I believe, his rookie year. Runs out of interception. We ended up posting on our uh, yeah. Instagram. Yeah, I remember that. And it was that moment. I said, let me pay a little bit more attention to this dude. He just shows up each and every week. Now... Is that part of being around like a guy like a Joe Thomas early in your career and having that type of uh, mentor, that type of tutor that really taught you what being a pro was all about? I don't know. But I do know this. Every time you turn a film on, that dude is all over the field. But now, with that said, can I get to my linchpin? Can I talk about what I want to talk about yeah, now? Yeah. You want to talk about oh, capacity and all that type of stuff. You want to talk about like Cleveland. Duh, who doesn't? It's like talking about Hollywood. Yeah, you talk about it. I can't wait to get out of Cleveland. It comes up a lot. <laughs> we talk about linchpin traits. The linchpin trait for an offensive guard is this. It's the enforcer. Who on that offensive line or who within your offensive line room at the guard position is going to be that player that when teams from a defensive side, they're game planning for the following week, they say, hey, that number 65, hey, that number 68, hey, that number 72, we need to watch out for him. That's the linchpin trait for a guard relative to building the perfect, the most perfect offensive line athlete. And I don't believe that there's anybody in today's National Football League that is a better example of that than somebody that he blew it early in the telecast here with going with Kelechi Asimel. Kelechi Asimel is my pick. He is the linchpin. He is the guy that when you turn the film on, it's go time. It's when, if I were a quarterback, and I would probably be a very good quarterback. If I were a quarterback, no, 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 no. <laughs> what? Let me live in my can, head. Can somebody get a ball? Can, can I live yeah. in my oh. head? Can okay, I live fine. in my head? Let me live. You barely throw spirals between your legs, See, and that's the best, that's the best pass you've ever thrown. <laughs> See, here's the problem right here. You, you just won't let me live. Let okay. me do my thing. Okay. Okay. So I'm trying to get back to my point here of me being a Hall of Fame quarterback that just never really quite, you know, took off the way that it, it did. So let's just say that I was. Kelechi Asimel is my guy that I'm saying each and every week, I'm good here. He's going to get the rest of his offensive line together. He's going to put the offense in a position where after that first play, that ball is snapped, we're now in control of the game, period. I think that's something that many teams are missing. We often get and see in today's game an over-reliance on what's the quarterback going to do? 
and the credit, the credit back, he's going to, and then you come out there, your first five plays are throws. Your quarterback is not a tempo setter. At the end of the day, this is a physical rough and tumble game. Somebody, somebody has got to get hit in the mouth. And if you're not going to have somebody at that guard position that's going to set the tempo, I think as an offense, as a team, you're always going to be fighting uphill. And Kelechi Asamel, he's my pick for what an enforcer is supposed to be. That's the obvious one. No, it's not. Yes. I think I really was off the grid and brilliant with this pick. I, see, I do. I watch Kelechi's like I watch it a movie. I don't yeah. care about it. It's anything. a highlight reel. I just like watching his game. like Instagram story. Yeah. I, I'm just yeah. not hip to that guy. Yeah. I'm new to that. But, uh, you know. <laughs> I, uh, well, you got. Okay. And now I have to go back for why I made this decision. It's going to be some trash, but no, go ahead. It, okay, first off. It's going to be some trash. It's a Hall of Famer. Okay. Today, right now? He'll be a Hall of Famer. Okay. So, 2012, I'm watching. Remember, remember the Steelers that take a guy, headbutt him, two gap? Yeah. When it was, oh, shoot. Yeah. They had, when it was Debo Harrison. Yeah, Debo. And you have Paul Mollett. Yeah. Debo Harrison yeah. and James Harrison are two different yeah. guys. Okay. So, <clears throat> playing the Ravens, Ben Grubbs is the left guard. was a monster. Mm -hmm. He was a very good player. I was a big fan of him. Yes. New Orleans. Then, he was a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. There was this little third-round pick from Iowa, Yonda. Okay. James, Debo, he had no respect for Ben Grubbs. Fair he enough. was trying to run through him. Palomalu was trying to remember. This is 2012. And he was this little third rounder that was setting the tempo. Whether it was naked, mm -hmm. I saw him falling back on nakeds, trying to clean everyone's clock. And this yeah. is when Steelers were terrifying to play. Yes. I mean, they probably are right now, but you, th Pumps, there were some yeah. names then. That Cam you, Hayward, exactly. Yeah, Cam right. Hayward. <laughs> hey, that's not an e easy Sunday. Yeah. Right. But I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. The, the division, that's a tough division. But with Yonda, James, when he kind of worked to that side, he had a little different respect for Yonda. And it was because the way Yonda just fought, you know I, what I mean? I respect that. And then Palomalu showed the same respect yeah. for him. And I was watching it, and I was like, you know, Yonda was my, he's like my favorite guard mm -hmm. um, ever outside of like, you know, the obvious, you know, obviously mm -hmm. Larry Allen. But just Yonda, the things he brought to like bringing that kind of space and that yeah. tackle set. Yeah. I just love it. mindset. Yeah. But and, he wasn't soft, though. No. It wasn't soft. Oh, because yeah. they were like, oh, that's, you set soft, get on him quick. No, right. like, no, he set right because he's stopping everybody. Fact. But when he has an opportunity versus those three, four defenses to tee off on the nose, on the, sh on the mm -hmm. nose or to tee off on the four eye. Yeah. He just, he's doing it. He's doing it. Yeah. And uh, I don't think he's big. I don't think he's just, like, Kelechi, he's just, shoot, he's scary just to me. That sounds very racist. Sounds racist, <laughs> right, dang it. <laughs> but he's just a big dude. Yonder, Yonder, you know, we might be at a grocery store together. You wouldn't know that guy just played no, a I football agree. game. You're right. You're and, right. But he sets just, the just, tempo. Just grabbing some milk. Yeah. yeah. And people, and, and defenders show him respect. No, that is a fact. And I know defenders are, fact. I know defenders are scared of Kelechi. And they should be. And they should be. Yes. But, I mean, for, Yonder, he's just he's not very like intimidating looking mm -hmm. or impressive looking. Yep. And he just shows up and he's ready to fight. If we had he's, to go in a different direction and just can be completely off the cuff here, my list is done, your list is done. And we say fine. We went with Yonder on the uh, the first video for just, you know, the overall traits, and he was the only player that was a current player that we put on that list for skill. Now we come back. And we get the guards. I wanted to pick him for skill, but I'm like, eh, I already picked him once. Yeah. He's the foundation. Let's kind of work our way through the bunch. Then we get to this element, this linchpin, and we go with Yonda, rightfully so once again. But if we had to go on a different route, and you put me in a box where, like you said, Kelechi's an easy pick, who do we go with? In today's game. In today's game, that if I got out of my comfort zone of going with probably the obvious pick, we get out of one area where we go with someone that's new, that hasn't been on the list. Who would we go with? Just off the cuff. I would. That's a tough one it's, for it's, this one. Yeah. It's uh, a, it's, the, I, I believe, like, if we went classic players, mm -hmm. I could come up with ones at every position. Centers, yeah. guard, tackle, and you, they'd all be right. And be yeah. like, and, and not, I don't even want to say classic. That's disrespectful. I'm, if we even went back from... 2000, before 2010, mm -hmm. there was tons of people playing offensive line 
and this is the point I'm trying to get at. It's missing. Yeah. That's the point I'm trying to get at is that do you, what you're saying, if we go back a decade, oh, gonna be this guy, oh, man, this guy, yeah, this guy. I'm going to be like you or Olin or Naylin. I can just, just keep throw going. names out there. Yeah. Now, it's like there's a lot of really good players, obviously, but it's like if we had to pick that one person that we say, Excuse me. you take this player in today's game <clears throat> and you throw them back 15, 20 years ago, they would fit in in terms of the mentality. We know Kelechi does. Yeah, I know Yonder does. We know Yonder does. We know Larry Wood. L- yeah, Larry. I believe Zach Martin would yeah, as well. A little young guy in Indy would. But I'm not sure if anyone's afraid of Zach Martin. No, I don't think I don't think so. I don't either. think so. I don't think anyone is uh, afraid of Larry Warford. No, I don't I think so. those guys all have respect, but people were afraid of Larry Allen. I like, think, yeah. yes. yes, people are, are, are genuinely afraid of Kelechi. I, I think defenders are genuinely afraid of Yonda. But our list gets really thin. I see Quentin Nelson, he's got that. A rep, maybe? He's building towards that resume. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, 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 I think this is something people overlook, too, with a rookie. Okay, yeah, show me your two. And then we can talk. That's what, everyone has a slump that song. It, it, it's hard. Everyone, even, I mean, even if you're talking about a great player. Yes. If something, it's, a little drop. Yes. Then they hopefully get back here through. Yes. Hopefully they don't have PTSD. Hopefully. Yeah. Right. And that's the part that I think so many people overlook is, okay, it's great. It's something somebody left a comment on the, the second video or the first video. They were saying, well, hopefully someday you're going to be talking about uh, Quentin Nelson in the same light. I said, man, that's probably 20 plus years away. And there's so many factors that will play a role in that. Number one is staying healthy. Yeah. Like that's the hard part is just staying healthy. And then getting through your second year, it is not easy because everything that you didn't fix in year one that you muscled through, you tend to not fix them going into year two because they really didn't hurt you. So I'm speaking from experience. They really didn't hurt you, but everything catches up to you. Like Coach Cooper at a house that used to always say, it don't catch up to you until it catches up to you. Yeah. Now, I didn't know what the hell he was saying until stuff started to catch up to me. Like it doesn't work. It doesn't, doesn't work. It doesn't, doesn't work. <laughs> and so with that being said, most young players get into the league and they don't address their flaws. They just continue to build on their strengths because that's fun. Well, if he doesn't address flaws, those flaws will catch up the following year. Hopefully, he fixes them. We're big fans. Go forward. But the list is slim, man. And that's that's unnerving. Um, yeah. You know, I hung out with you and uh, some older players. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I was in Chicago as an older team. And then with Olin and stuff like that, it was just, that was more appreciated, you know what I mean? Yeah. The guy that kind of fell on, maybe he falls on his face because he was trying to kill the guy. Yes. And he might miss because the guy looped, but it didn't it okay. stop him from trying to kill people. Yes. And yeah. that's that's more scary than the guy not tr- trying not to mess up. Absolutely. And, and that, you know, I, I believe O-line, it was more like, it was way more instinct. It, it is what it is. It was yeah. way more instinctual. We were trying to move people. We we're trying to hurt people, mm-hmm. whatever. Yes, what Within is. the rules of the game. Yes, yeah. Now it's, Within the rules of the game, let's not mess up. Let's not get beat. And it's just a mind shift. It's, it's a mind shift. Yeah. And the game is different. And, you know, we just have to ask ourselves, uh, are we ever going to get back to that mindset with players within the context of what we want to see moving forward? I think uh, that's the hard part is getting the game to continue to evolve, but players to evolve with it. You don't want to see the game to get to a particular space and players don't fit. Yeah, you want the players to fit what we're trying to get done. I think a lot of young players are paralyzed, you know, paralyzed because of the environments that they're in. And this can be an entirely different uh, segment here that we probably should talk about at some it's point. It's probably a great time. But nonetheless, this has been fun discussing guards, building a perfect offensive line athlete. We're going to come back with tackles next and wrap up the series. And then we've keep, you know, we're keep talking about so many other little uh, subtopics within these, this particular topic. There's so much more content coming from us here at the OLP Lounge. I had to make sure I spelled it right. OLP. Good job. So you guys got it. Appreciate it.